the way I happen to do it with an attorney that asked me to scan back, that is the confirmation. I scan the signature and certificate pages, create a PDF, send it to the attorney, and they know it's done. Everything's good. Um, sometimes there are status issues. So today, uh, there was an appointment arranged for me at noon, and it was right after another trust that I was handling. I waited 15 minutes. and was like, mm, where's the guy? So I needed to contact the attorney to say, hey, did I, do I have the wrong date? Am I supposed to go to his house? What, what's up? And she said, oh my God, he probably forgot. Um, let me get with him and let's see how we can make this work for him to get it done. Um, so it was important for me because she wants, she didn't want me to just call him and see, where are you? She wanted to pick up that ball back and talk with him about what's happening and what's going to be best for him. And I want to make space for that to happen. If the attorney said, here's this number you can call, great, I'll take care of it. But I always know that uh, attorneys are really particular about their clients and they want to make sure they're doing some handholding there. Uh, they don't they don't want to feel like they handed them off and the client is like, well, what the hell? I paid all this money. Where's the attorney? So I always give that chance back to the attorney to do that. Um, the other thing is that if something comes up at the table, I don't hesitate to call the attorney uh, with that previous assignment I had today. The funding letter did not have a signature page. Now, I had a conversation about what the funding letter was. It was you know, all about the different ways people have assets and how you put it into a trust. And after we were done with that, um, I went to do the signature page and I'm like, wait a minute, because I pulled things in and out of the binder. I don't see a signature page. Gosh, darn it. Did I stick it in the wrong spot? I probably spent five minutes looking, where is the signature page? So I had to call the attorney. It's not notarized, but I wanted to say, look, I've checked and double checked. I don't see a funding page. And believe me, I was feeling nervous about, oh yeah, it's right there. I know it's it. She said right away, you know what, Laura, I didn't make them sign a funding agreement. Uh, there isn't one. So she forgot, because that's a very rare thing for that not to be in there. I noticed it was missing. I do. Uh, I am her notary, go-to notary. I probably do 99% of hers. I know what they look like, and I know when something's not there. And when I called her, she said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I should have mentioned it to you. I, I know that you would call me if something was missing. Another time there was a whole advanced healthcare directive missing. And I said, look, is there a reason why this whole section doesn't have anything? And she said, oh, they have one already. So they asked me, they didn't want to redo it. They wanted to use what they had. So she was very appreciative and it gave her confidence in me that I know what should be there. And when something's not there, that I'm going to say something, I'm going to speak up about it. I'm just not going to skip it and say, well, it's not there. I guess they don't need it. Yeah. So I think having that that uh, ongoing communication with the attorney is really helpful in fostering ongoing relationship with them. Uh, Bill, did you have anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, so look, if we're in a relationship-based business, what is 80% of a relationship is communication. So over communication has served me more than under communication. Like sometimes... I can tell it's a little over the top when I'm confirming with signers, I'm confirming with the escrow, I'm texting, I'm emailing, but overall they appreciate it because sometimes uh, not just notaries, but other vendors, everybody, they just don't communicate at all. So you don't know if people are showing up or not. So I have found that over communication is where the side I want to err on because people appreciate that. Even if it gets a little like, okay, we get it, Bill, you're on time all the time. Great. But I'd rather have that reputation, but understanding the, um, the full journey of an estate plan can actually help you with this too. And this was, this, this is why I couldn't be an estate planning attorney because of the amount of time that it takes from the initial meeting to actually signing can sometimes be months, sometimes even 18 months, 24 months, because on this particular topic, when we're talking about death and incapacitation and all these things that a lot of people kind of push away, 
they procrastinate even more. So when you, when you have an appreciation of the journey, like if, if these documents have gotten to you, that means a lot has gone on this, this estate planning professional attorney, paralegal company, whatever it is, they have cultivated probably a very long, deep relationship with. So when you understand that, then it makes a lot more sense to over communicate because it's, they've worked hard to get here and you play a critical role in that. And I want to let them know, Hey, I've got your client. Oh, they rescheduled again. That's okay. I've got time. You know, I just want to over communicate on that level. And that's the only thing I would contribute to that.